Hi, Hello. Cecile. Hello. Hi. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you too. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing the lunchtime studio visit with us. Of course. Yeah. Please come in. <laughs> oh, I think. Cool. How's it going? Good. Good. Here we are. <laughs> um. Yeah. How is uh? Were you at the studio the whole time last year during quarantine or uh, like after quarantine? No, I actually stayed home for like uh, three, four months. Cool. You know, also while EFA was closed. Right, um, yeah. Yeah. But then I came back as soon as uh, I actually had a pretty busy fall and winter. Wow. So yeah, I've been here pretty often. W were you showing last year? Like, yeah, like last December year? was very, very busy. Wow. Um, so yeah, I was I was working. <laughs> what were sh like shows like? Uh, yeah, doing I, shows. I had a yeah. solo show um, at Selena's Mountain. Um, oh, that's a great place. And then yeah. I also had yeah, thank you. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Uh, and I was also at an art fair, been to art fair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with the International Chinese Art Arts Council. So. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was pretty busy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How what what kind of work yeah, are you working on now? I'm yeah, in. I'm about to start uh, two um, two paintings uh -huh. on a skateboard. Oh, cool! And, um, I have to fix this surface a little bit. Uh -huh. um, I usually um, paint on wood, so I have a lot of fun looking for grounds that um, that attract me, and I uh -huh. found these online. I have never painted in such a small Yeah, it's uh, a small board. board. Yeah. So Cuz usually they are like that, right? Those those are surfboards? Those are long boards actually. Long boards. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So those are much bigger, but these are what they call the old-fashioned um the old school skateboards. Uh-huh. I'm not sporty at all. So <laughs> why so why why skateboards? <laughs> to um to hold these objects in my studio like um when i was little i had asthma so i could not play or run around too much mm -hmm. um i don't even ride a bicycle wow i think I, oh. I i always laugh that i may be the only chinese person on this planet <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so it's a lot of fun for me to use these objects i also have like ping pong paddles or paddle balls right like yeah uh-huh no, it just has yeah. such a strong symbolism in it, in of itself. And, yeah. And you were, what are the techniques that you're you're? So I use that? encaustic, which is a very traditional medium. Uh -huh. um, the portraits of the Fayyam um, mummies were also from two thousand years ago. Wow. Uh, were actually painted with the same material. Uh -huh. um, so I hope that my work would last. Uh, as long <laughs> as the like mummies. Years, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually it's beeswax mm. melted with um, natural resin. Yeah. Cool. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty minimum. This is my. Oh, wow. Uh, my hot palette. <laughs> it's actually like a pancake riddle that I started using a long time ago. And then I, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to upgrade. But somehow it still works and I'm still with it. <laughs> Uh, so this is the encaustic medium, uh -huh. and I, I I heat it up, and then I apply it, and then right. after every layer, I fuse it with a heat gun. Oh, right, yeah. And then uh, in between each layer, I would add something, like mm -hmm. I would add rice paper. So this is pre-painted rice paper that oh. I have. So then this will be like my mountains. No, and in between each layer, I keep adding, adding and adding. Wow. And what you see, the landscape is actually these chunks of encaustic that I have on the side. Uh -huh. And then I would add, you know, wow. and then I would fuse. And then the top three layers, I would add figures uh -huh. that I appropriate from vintage books. Right, yeah. Uh, from East and West, I, I still like to describe them in like, um, in terms of east and west mm -hmm. um and yeah, then it's I, like a marriage between the two yeah, yeah and then i create my own uh narratives 
and I always describe them as um, my placeholders where I want people to be able to identify with one of the characters, one of the figures. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I was and born in Ecuador to Chinese parents, so I have this like East and West right, experience like, and narrative. You have a really interesting background story. What, uh, you're born <laughs> in you. yeah, you're born in Ecuador. Yeah. Your, are your parents immigrated to Ecuador? Uh, actually, my grandparents. Oh wow! Did. Second gen. And yeah, yeah oh, wow. and it was actually until I was here in my mid twenties doing. Um, a master's degree in education actually that I learned oh, about no. the Chinese exclusion out in the Amer in the US. Yeah. So it actually makes a lot of sense that my grandparents and their families ended up in South America. Yeah. They first went to Peru and then they went north to Ecuador uh, because there were better opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out that they were merchants. Wow. Um, yeah. In well, a way, I, yeah. I'm happy that they ended up in South America because right. that made my experience, you know. Yeah, was it like a lot safer or do you feel more integrated or no? Like what? Um, was like Because like, I know being in North America and mm. that has like racially been profiled or that's very, very often would be, uh -huh. the, would be the case. Like uh, was your what was your childhood in like? In Ecuador, um, it was intense. Right. It was intense. Um, I think growing up there were like maybe 500 uh, Asians in the whole city, in the wow. capital. Wow. Um, but um, there was my mom had this group of friends and they call it La Colonia China, the mm. Chinese colony where they would gather. So, uh, and they call each other paisanos, you know, like paisans and uh, they would have gatherings, they would have dinner and play mahjong and you know, so it was like a small Chinese colony. Community, yeah. Um, but I think the um, Asians in Latin America, they're much more integrated um, because it's such a small group. Mm -hmm. um, so my schooling, it was, it was pretty much like my sister and I mm. being the only the Asians only. in school. There were intense moments, right? Um, but I think um, I got used to it, and I got um, I got I got comfortable um, navigating, I guess you can say, and right. you know, um, yeah. I think a good way to describe it might be like this shifting identities like of depending on where you are mm. um like in ecuador i would i would be like oh chinese when i i actually did spend five years living with my grandmother in macau oh wow in omun wow. um and then even though look wise my sister and i blend blended in but <laughs> <laughs> once we open our mouths people could tell like we had a spanish accent <laughs> Uh, speaking Cantonese, so they they would right. say like, oh, they're foreigners, Guay Mui. So it would be like, okay, so here in Macau, we were also, you know, uh, foreigners. So we were like yeah. Ecuadorians, and here I am like um, uh, Asian Latinx, so Chinese Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian Chinese. You know, there's always so, like a name. Yeah, or... there's always like. The, the other, other exactly, yeah. and the almost you, you're like invisible, invisible because you're kind of it's like being stuck. I I I know exactly how that feels, and then in some in all your paintings, you're like they're really trying to like vocalize that invisibility. Like here I am, this is my story. Mm -hmm. Like you, the way you're like very very like obviously using these motifs are very, very strong and making a, a point for for your for your case like for your stance here yeah like, um yeah. i also like to question especially with what is going on uh right mm -hmm. now uh i also like to question like who gets to tell the story you know who's who's being exoticized like who is the stranger in this 
um, in this composition. Oh. But I also like to think, like in terms of micro and macro. Mm. And when people make me feel like I don't belong, I, I just, I just. I just feel like I do, you know, I'm like, um, I belong, we all belong in this planet. So yeah. even though yeah. uh, I try not to think of um, the US as my world, you know, I think of mm -hmm. the world as our world, like yeah. we all belong here. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily has to be here. Um, so I do, I do want to take up space, my own space in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. what you just said, something really stood out is like, it's like you're, these works are really all questioning who is fetishizing who. Because mm -hmm. like in the East, they fetishize the West in a way of, in a way of these cartoon characters and that, that like the little girl, like remember growing up, like watching these like Disney cartoons mm -hmm. and that have that mm -hmm. fantasy about here likewise being the same thing is being done in the west also which yeah really it's really yes, really yes. stood out yeah uh yeah and i just finished this one. Oh wow um and one because i'm doing a lot of research uh for the last two three years mm -hmm. uh on blue and white wear and how it's how blue and white wear it's been in transmitter of like ideas and images across cultures uh -huh. and history and uh, how how obsessed uh, people were with these objects um, and then when I finish this composition and what is going on with this anti-Asian um, racism and yeah. violence it makes me think about and I keep seeing this quote that says like love our people the way you love our food oh. um, and uh, I was in this talk yesterday and the the term signophobia and signophilia uh -huh. were mentioned you know yeah. in terms of like um, signophobia about fear and hatred uh -huh. of the foreign but yeah. yeah signophilia is this desire and like almost an obsession Absolutely. Of, of the fetish the, of the, yes. the 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 of the unknown the, the mystery yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of, the, of what is foreign yeah you no know, so i yeah. feel like um there's a lot to to learn and you know to to unpack um for sure yeah yeah and i think um Educating and re-educating ourselves, especially during this time, is very necessary. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, uh, wow. So, were you? Are you working on the blue and white ones? Are the later? Are the more? The, more the latest? Yeah, ones? I usually go back and forth. Like, uh -huh. um, um, yeah, so I see I mean, a lot of yeah. the the blue and white. Yeah. Yeah, I've been focusing in blue and white. Um, uh -huh. Lately, I just finished these two also, pretty recent. Uh, wow. The last few years, two years I've also been... Um, oh. also been uh, weaving. Mm -hmm. um, I have this romantic idea that I would um, travel through the Silk Road, you know, like, oh. and visit, uh, visit spots. Um, the main spots of the Silk Road and yeah. actually uh, many years ago I was already in parts of the Silk Road in China uh -huh. but I was not into blue and white wear so I wasn't really paying attention <laughs> in in those terms uh -huh. um, but I, I went to like Xi'an and parts of Xinjiang and right, yeah. northern, northwestern China as well mm -hmm. but then I thought oh what can I do if I go to the Silk Road I, I cannot paint with and costing right <laughs> so, yeah you can't bring a so, bee wax yeah. there <laughs> so i'm thinking oh i'm going to be doing tapestries and getting material from every stop and put it together you know oh. but um but i'm not sure so are these from the truck from the trip no oh. no not at all these uh -huh. are pretty local materials uh -huh. um but they also just like in my work uh, -huh. uh in my paintings the materials become 
like signifiers representing a, a, a place mm -hmm. um, or culture. Um, here also, they made me think about, um, you know, like feathers kind of representing yeah. uh, native cultures and this these tassels that make me think a lot about uh, kind of a European yeah, uh, totally. yeah, yeah. palace yeah, yeah. What are, then, the, are, the, are those hands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these Victorian hands appear um, ah. at my doorknob in my apartment in Brooklyn <laughs> and it was really strange like oh I don't know who left them here let me put them out <laughs> So I put them in the front door and the next morning it was back on my doorknob and I said, mm, I don't know, I guess I was meant to use them. Uh -huh. So here they are. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that light usually turns on, but I I didn't put a battery, so it's Oh, not, is that a is yeah, that an LED strip or something? Blanks. Oh. Yeah, I ran out of battery, sorry. Like here? These Yeah, ones? yeah. Wow. It's also the shape of a Wawa, which are Oh. One of my sculptures. Um, and you've been showing them uh, around the city? Right? Yes. Yeah. So I have this public art installation that's uh -huh. called El Dorado. Yeah. Uh, the Golden, the new 49ers, honoring the 49% of New York City households that speak a language other than English. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I think three, year, three or four years ago, I really wanted to honor. Um, the 49% of New York City households speak a language other than English. So I yeah. made a hundred of them and I painted 49 of them gold. Because oh. El Dorado means the gold. Gold. Uh -huh. um, and right now it's at Snap Harbor uh, with the New House Center for Contemporary Art. Uh -huh. And the previous year was at Wave Hill in the Bronx. It was part of an exhibition titled Figure in the Floral. Mm. Uh, and then before that was in Flushing, Queens, mm. uh, at the Lewis Latimer House. And my first site was in Sunset Park in Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah, and this wow. year it's going to go to the Doug Hammarskjöld Plaza by the United Where, Nations. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm really excited. Wow, that's <laughs> a really great location yeah. to show these. And also, yeah. in terms of meaning, um, I really like, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. that is going to be the last stop in that location. Yeah. True, it's like a little tour that is going, yeah. tour of totally, New York. Yeah, totally. Oh, wow. And, uh, and do you have any of the gold ones no, here? No, the gold or? ones are out. Oh. These are ones like are pretty much for indoors. Cool. So, I really started with the idea that, um, I wanted to have a South American component uh, in my work mm -hmm. uh, because my work was looking very much like, you know, East and West. Yeah. Um, so I grew up seeing Native women carrying their babies throughout the Andes, carrying uh -huh. their babies on their backs. And I thought, I, I always enjoy uh, looking at them. And someone told me that uh, these babies were, a lot of them were swaddled. Right, 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 right. Um, and I was told that a good swaddle is actually when the baby could stand on the table like a bottle. So I thought, okay, what, um, what can I do with that information? Right. Um, yeah. So I was really obsessed with that information for months and maybe uh -huh. years. And until one day, because they are included in my paintings. <laughs> oh. So the, they, uh, I call them wawas, yeah. which is a baby or a child yeah. in Quechua in the native language. So I sprinkle them. Uh, this boy is holding a wawa. <gasps> they're also, they're like my tabula rasa, my blank slate. Uh -huh, uh -huh. um, like a recurring motif that's like yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And now actually, they're my recurrent symbol of humanity in my work. Yeah. Um, so I did take bottles, most of them plastic, oh. and I swaddle them with plaster and burlap, like the very uh, traditional way uh -huh. of, of sculpting. Mm -hmm. And once it dries, I, I dip them in encaustic, and then I paint them 
for indoors. Right. And for outdoors, I, I, um, I've been adding a layer of uh, resin mm. with fiberglass. Right, just to seal it. In. Yeah, yeah, to seal it and for, sure. for the weather gotcha. as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, it's so interesting because like Wawa also means dolls yeah, and Mandarin. Yeah, like, I'm so yeah. excited. And it's, it's just so universal. And the way that it's like swaddle a baby, a child, and the way it's carrying a mother's shoulder is the same in, yes. in Asian uh, culture yes. as well. So yes. like, that just goes to show how like we're all the same. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. My, my work is exactly that. Yeah. Alexander is like... It's about, you know, cultural interaction, interpretation, mm -hmm. and also, uh, you know, the commonalities that we share with nature and with each other. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So, uh, yeah, I spoke about my material, I spoke about my figures, yeah, and I spoke about the Wawa, so. I wonder, like you were saying nature, and you also have this body of work that uses natural materials like flowers and, and plants and... I remember you had an install yeah. uh, somewhere. Is that is that the install? I was seeing this. Uh, this one is of actually, live flowers. Yes, um, this one is in New Orleans wow. uh, from twenty seventeen. I had an amazing studio uh -huh. uh, with a soft wall, and before oh. that, I was that winter. A few months before that, I was. Um, at Wave Hill uh, as an artist in residence for right. the winter workspace. Mm. So at Wave Hill, I was able to gather materials from the compost pile, which was, and oh. it was, it's been very hard for me to get rid of those natural materials. So actually uh -huh. I re, re, reused them on this piece. Wow. Um, when, you, when is this done? So this one was after I came back or? from New Orleans. Oh. So I, I did, um, I, I think I, feel, I did three or four of these installations mm -hmm. in like a year and a half or two years. Right. Um, after they, I came back yeah. from New Orleans, so I actually have these um, flowers from Wave Hill uh -huh. and these were from New Orleans. New Orleans. So I have like what? winter and summer in a way oh. uh, mixed together. So interesting. It also um, is on the blue and white background and it, what what is the material is under um, is that plaster or that is on thank you i always feel very flattered when people think that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's actually, like a piece of rock or something yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, people, <laughs> people you tricked me <laughs> um people think you know like cement or yeah. actually repurpose um material uh from a from an installation at brick project room. Mm. um so talking about nature i have always wanted since i always include nature as a setting for my paintings i have always wanted to start creating installations referencing nature and mm -hmm. how we're all part of nature uh, yeah. so at brick i created this kind of landscape um, and I also mirror um, objects that were in the painting so there was a painting with a swing with a tricycle oh. with a birthday cake and I had the three-dimensional objects there uh -huh. also wow ones mm. but uh, these were the support for the mountains that I use with um, oh. uh, astroturf you know so um, <laughs> I, I love materials and it was very hard for me to throw this construction foam mm. away. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now we know. Now yeah. I tell you the answer. Now we know. Um, so it's light, so it should be pretty yeah, light, right? Cool. And I love that it's malleable, so I've installed yeah. it in two, three different places and uh -huh. every time uh, it gets installed in a different configuration. Mm. Yeah. Um, Originally, I wanted to make like a broken plate, but it was taking me somewhere else. So I, <laughs> I call yeah. it Chicken Little, like Chicken Little, the story that uh, the sky is falling. Oh. Um, and it was about fear mongering. And I also felt that uh, uh -huh. that was what happening, the political climate and, you know, uh, with immigrants, especially and this whole 
like this whole thing about fear mongering that yeah uh, that was horrible so the um, the last four years has just been yeah we're yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's crazy yeah. but no it speaks so much volume because because in your work there's so much par like paradox and juxtapositions going on and knowing the fact that they are not as it appears to be like they're lighter than it than those materials appears to be like kind of goes in with the whole thinking of mm. of the paradox that with exists within the within one piece itself thank you that's my, <laughs> that's kind of how i saw it <laughs> yeah my two thank cents yeah. yeah no thank you for your time today sure like, yeah thank really you so much a great for time. Visit. yeah what what ex what project do you have upcoming uh, right now i am uh doing a residency with that urban field station um through zoom mm. which is something new mm. uh so i'm doing a community collaboration uh working with sunset park cool um and i'm also doing a research fellowship with the hispanic society they have an amazing collection of blue and white wear oh. especially from Spain and Mexico. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I've been focusing on. That's days. that's cool. Yeah. And when are when is the install for your UN uh, oh, Wawa's? Yeah, that one will be at the end of the year. Cool, cool. Yeah, so we should be doing a site visit soon. Oh, that's exciting! <laughs> yeah, so we will definitely be looking out for yeah for your install at the end yes, of the year please. everyone yeah. has to go check out the <laughs> the install at un yes. and uh yeah thank you for your time sure. again thank you yeah